Climate change is a real problem and we should be taking the early action that many governments have indeed committed to. Some admittedly with more competence and commitment than others. The bulk of the evidence supports that. What it doesn't support is the systematic terrifying of young people into believing that they don't have a future. And yet not only is that what campaigners are doing, but because too many scientists think that all communications must be campaign messaging, almost nobody is standing up against this. Let's have a look at the latest case in point. Over recent days, Extinction Rebellion have been doing the all-too-familiar protests in various places, but particularly in London. They've received muted but moderate mainstream media attention. However, one group caught the imagination and went somewhat viral on youth social media platform TikTok. And that was the group of self-identified scientists for Extinction Rebellion. So there was this action where a group of activists wearing white coats to identify themselves as scientists protested outside the government's business and energy department. And some of them did what the activists do. They glued their hand to the building and spray painted it. And those that did were duly arrested as they expected and intended. Now let's step back from the emotionality that people bring to all of this and just look at what's going on here. The campaigner's position is that the science is on their side, which is a claim that rather depends on exactly what they're saying. But if people don't look too closely and just presume it's saying that, you know, climate change will be a bad thing in the longer term, yeah, that's pretty solid. That isn't what they're saying, by the way. We'll come to that. By wearing white coats, they're seeking to bring to their campaign an argument from authority. And it's strongly performative. It says, we are scientists, not just your standard activists. We are operating on the basis of the scientific method. If we're prepared to do extraordinary things to get your attention, you should presume that this is A, true, and B, urgent. The white coats also bear a slogan. Science says new oil and gas equals death. Blunt and unequivocal. Science says, full stop. Any statement from authority is front and centre with all their communications. Let's just quickly hear Dr Charlie Gardner there in his white coat explaining the spirit of the action. About 25 scientists from Scientists for Extinction Rebellion are taking action here today. Eight of them have glued on to the building in an attempt to get arrested. They, the police were not showing any signs of arresting them, so they've subsequently escalated their action by spraying, using um, chalk spray to tag the building. That has now resulted in several arrests and several scientists have been arrested and taken off to the police station now. So we're now seeing scientists getting arrested in the UK and the very scientists who have spent years and years and years working to give us the information that we need to know to tell us to act now, pretty much. That's exactly it. You know, this is... This is an extraordinary thing. To see a mass arrest of scientists, it's just crazy. I never thought I'd live in a world where there would be mass arrests of scientists. But this is the times we live in. We have been trying to change the world, uh, trying to save the world through our research for all this time. Those that have decision-making power have been ignoring us. Um, and so we find ourselves in this calamitous, deadly situation that we're in today. Um, and of course we can't accept that so we've had to go beyond our day-to-day -day jobs just to try and get our voices heard yeah. and you know nobody wants to be doing this i think everybody here would rather be at work doing yeah. their jobs you know the stuff that, that that we trained ourselves to do but it's emergency times and that hasn't worked providing research hasn't been enough to make the changes so you know we're scientists we we base our actions on evidence the evidence shows that just doing research hasn't been enough to bring about the policy changes we need so we've looked at the ed evidence from history how does social change happen and when you look at history evidence shows that non-violent civil resistance is the most powerful way to make the change so that's what we're doing now we will come back to my analysis of that action in a moment. 
But first, let's take the moment to note that this, thanks to that claimed authority, succeeded in going viral amongst one of its presumed target audiences, young people. Elena Wood, a scientist specialising in waste and a climate communicator with 300,000 followers on TikTok, raised an alarm with a tweet that said this. How do I politely tell some prominent climate scientists on here that their tweets are causing young people to have panic attacks and suicidal thoughts over on TikTok? And she shared screenshots of a whole bunch of such young people. And apologies if I labour this point, but this is important. This video is going to be my declaration of giving up. I've been getting so many videos about climate change and I've been crying and shaking for the past three hours. I'm going to stop caring because we might not even be alive in the next couple of years or because a couple of billionaires want to be greedy. Scientists have been arrested for trying to warn us. Please don't give up on the world. This one shows screenshots of scientists being arrested, saying... I'm having an effing panic attack. Me, debating pressing the not interested button on every single climate change video because it makes my climate anxiety worse. Currently trying to find an ounce of motivation to type this paper when NASA scientists just chained themselves to a building trying desperately to get people to listen about climate change becoming irreversible in three years. You're still with me? We're not done yet. My last brain cell, when a scientist literally chained himself to a door to warn us and I am still expected to care about finals. They had a whole SWAT team to arrest the scientists trying to spread actually information about how if we don't try to stop mass pollution of oil, gas and other bad shit for the environment, we are screwed. We only have five years to change it or we're done. Scientists are crying, begging in front of banks on the street to stop donating money to fossil fuel mining. They are saying future generations will have to fight for water. We only have three years. And so on, 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 and so on. So if the campaign objectives of this particular group are to terrify young people into giving up on life, well, it's been outstandingly effective. But what actually are the campaign objectives? Well, let's look at their own website. Now, there's two related websites. One, Scientists for Extinction Rebellion, which doesn't specify any demands, just says that they support XR and it's call for citizens' assemblies. Then there's Scientists Rebellion. They produced a letter of demands and it has a bunch of preamble. But then this is the pointy bit. Three bullet points of specifics. One, to achieve decarbonisation on the required scale demands economic degrowth, at least in the short term. This does not necessarily require a reduction in living standards, they claim. Two, for a just transition, the cost of degrowth must be paid for by the wealthiest, who have benefited enormously from the current destructive world order, while others have faced the consequences. Three, a just transition to a sustainable system requires the wealth from the 1% to be used for the common benefit. They then add this, the most effective means of achieving systemic change in modern history is through non-violent civil resistance. We call on academics, scientists and the public to join us in civil disobedience to demand emergency decarbonisation and degrowth facilitated by wealth redistribution. Now, you might listen to that and think it sounds like a left-wing political declaration. Wealth redistribution, systemic change, not a scientific statement of action that government should be taking in relation to climate change. I would be hard pushed to disagree with you on that assessment. Now, political activism is a freedom enjoyed by all citizens in a democratic society. By all means, argue your case. 
Why would that case be supported by the white coats of science specifically here? Is it the settled will of science that wealth redistribution is the natural and effective solution to climate change? Well, I hadn't seen that in the peer-reviewed literature. So let's go back to that protest that has upset so many youngsters because scientists are now being arrested. And indeed, that's the impression they have because that's what they're being told. Let's remember. So we're now seeing scientists getting arrested in the UK and the very scientists who have spent years and years and years working to give us the information that we need to know to tell us to act now, pretty much. That's exactly it. You know, this is... This is an extraordinary thing. To see a mass arrest of scientists, it's just crazy. I never thought I'd live in a world where there would be mass arrests of scientists. But this is somewhat deceptive, isn't it? Scientists are citizens, and as such, they're entitled, should they choose, to be political activists. And in this case, are they being arrested because they're scientists doing science? or because they're activists choosing to break the law. Well, Charlie makes it perfectly clear the aim here was to behave sufficiently provocatively to push the authorities to arrest them. Now, should people be able to break the law with impunity just because they wear white coats? Well, of course not. If you take part in a demonstration where you deliberately and knowingly break the law, that's part of the essence of your protest, then you shouldn't be able to bleat on about how dreadful it is that people are being arrested. I mean, they specifically said the police weren't arresting us, so we did more until they did. What about the interviewer's proposition? that Charlie agrees with, by the way, that these are the very scientists who have been warning us of the dangers of climate change. Well, not entirely. Some of the scientists who actually are most involved in the actual IPCC research and talk about it in public are not happy about spreading doomism among children. Like Dr Robert Rode, who retweeted Elena Wood's tweet stream, saying, We failed these kids twice. First, by causing global warming. Secondly, by scaring them shitless and making them believe an apocalypse is just around the corner. So, who are the people at this protest? To be able to join the scientist rebellion, you have to be able to show some genuine academic credentials. Which is rather a large pool. So, who did we end up with? Well, let's start with Charlie. Charlie's Twitter bio says this, conservationist, activist, writer, researcher, rebelling against extinction. We should probably take him at his word when he puts activist ahead of researcher. He is indeed an activist first and foremost. His Twitter timeline doesn't seem to contradict that. Dr Aaron Thierry, graduate student, researching the role of emotionality in climate communications of social movements. PhD Ecology Activism. Emotionality. Well, wade through TikTok, Aaron. See if you can identify the cause of all the emotionality going on there right now. But again, activism features large. This one, molecular biologist researching microbial photosynthesis, taking action for our planet and communities with at scientist X at the Green Party. Dr Sarah Vestergram, a social psychologist who says, drop me a DM or an email if you're interested in doing a PhD with me on collective action, protests or activism. Professor Colin Davies, who spray-painted an XR symbol on the government building. Most of his research to date has been about human cognition. But he says this, More recently, I have become interested in the psychology of climate change. How should information about climate change be communicated? And what are the factors that give rise to apparent climate apathy? Emma Smart, an ecologist who was arrested and has formerly been an activist with the offshoot group Insulate Britain, she describes herself as freelance, fish girl, scientist, activist, public nuisance. Now, I'm not arguing that any of those people don't qualify under the term scientists. None of them, however, qualify for the description of climate scientist of the sort that have been contributing to the IPCC reports. They all qualify and apparently self-identify more as activists, which is appropriate. 
But would those teenagers have been angsting on TikTok because a bunch of political activists got arrested? I'm guessing probably not. Now, it's not entirely false, however, that there was at least one NASA scientist present, at least one person who might qualify with those relevant credentials. Peter Kalmus, Twitter handle at Climate Human, who describes himself thus, NASA climate scientist terrified by societal inaction, revoking fossil fuel social license. He is the author of a climate activism book published in 2017, talking about this. Alarmed by drastic changes now occurring in the Earth's climate systems, the author, a climate scientist and suburban father of two, embarked on a journey to change his life and the world. He began by bicycling, growing food, meditating and making other simple, fulfilling changes. Ultimately, he slashed his climate impact to under a tenth of the US average and became happier in the process. Being the Change explores the connections between our individual daily actions and our collective predicaments, emerging science, spirituality and practical action to develop a satisfying and appropriate response to global warming. OK, well, nothing wrong with any of that. Maybe he can find his way to being an effective agent for the change that he'd like to see in the world. Good for him. But there are two things worth noting. Out of all of the various scientists associated with NASA... The rest of them are not joining protests to get arrested. That does not mean, by the way, that they don't think climate change is an urgent and important issue. You know, commensurate with governments deciding to adopt policies for net zero, which is a major commitment, and all of that. But they are not telling children they will possibly die soon. And secondly, in case you think that Peter Kalmus probably doesn't buy into the negative side of this, he's just not aware of all those unintended consequences, it's worth noting that he tweeted a snide response to Elena Wood's tweet thread with all of that youthful despair that she was pointing to. And it said this, How do I politely tell some prominent world leaders on here that their irresponsibility and indifference over climate change are causing young people to have panic attacks and suicidal thoughts. And this was typical of the huge pushback against Elena Wood's Twitter thread. People saying things like, have you read the IPCC report? We should all be having panic attacks all day, every day. And she summed up the overwhelming responses like this. I haven't checked Twitter in 24 hours because I've been working overtime to address a sudden increase in climate doom and anxiety over on TikTok. And I have hundreds of hate replies, mentions and messages on here from both trolls and people I considered colleagues. Wow. No wonder so many young people struggle with climate anxiety and often do so quietly. Quite a few people on here dismiss climate anxiety and some even seem to encourage it, saying it's a healthy part of understanding the climate crisis. Indeed, and those are the arguments of genuine fanatics, people who are so absorbed into the doomist mindset that any sense of a healthy perspective has become impossible for them. Many of them made their outrage felt at this Twitter thread pointing to all of the angst, And within a day or two, she had protected her Twitter account from them. Should this be validated by the white coats of science? Well, the IPCC reports have serious things to say. But the scientists closest to that science, the ones for whom it's their actual area of expertise, seem pretty united in failing to interpret the reports as suggesting that young people are doomed or that there's a lack of hope based on current policies. The campaign message of the white coats, new oil equals death, first of all is nonsensically simplistic, to be passed off as the voice of science. The rationale for it, I assume, is because according to the IEA, to meet the 1.5 degree C limit to global warming, you would not develop any additional new fossil fuel reserves, which is fine for an aggregate statement. But climate change people who are so obsessed with their single variable miss the fact that geopolitics is a big thing in the world right now. Countries that are committed to a managed programme towards net zero will still be using a gradually decreasing quantity of fossil fuels over the coming few decades. And the question is, how do you source those fossil fuels in a way that is reliable, lower cost and not vulnerable to major hostile powers? 
One can debate whether the current proposals are correct or are justified, but the equals deaf part is ridiculous, overblown and very much the language of activism, not science. As for the idea that science says that non-violent civil resistance is the most effective thing to create change in history, that really is the Mickey Mouse version of both science and history. Change to what? To what end? And to the benefit of whom? There are many forces to make change in the world. To be fair, stupidity has certainly been one of them, but only by chance was that ever producing change for the better. The complex mutual problem that is climate change is much more right now driven by the dynamics and the needs of China and of India. Now, of course, people do use that fact as a slogan as well, just to try to shut down any action on the premise that because China, therefore we don't need to do anything. The difference is that most people take one look at that and they recognise the fallacy of that argument, hence why it gets very short shrift in public debate. But they are being taken in by the white coats and the implied impression that unless the UK government submits to political activists and their wish lists, then young people have no future. That is an even worse argument and the scientific community should be calling it out. Now, mostly they're not. At best, they're ignoring the white-coated activists. Some of them are murmuring appreciatively, if non-specifically. There's a couple quietly tut-tutting. It seems to me it all comes down to what I've said before. We live at a time when all official communications have now become campaign communications. And we seem to be willing to tolerate people being wrong if their exaggerations kind of go with the grain of the right message that we think people should be hearing that might get them to do the right things. We will only call out and demonise those whose messaging goes the other way, however lightly and gently they push back against the mainstream. Personally, I think that makes you partially responsible for these negative outcomes. Now, you can't be responsible for what every hippie carrying an XR banner says. Fine. But when so-called scientists wear white coats saying, I am a scientist in order to terrify children, isn't it the responsible of everyone who values the genuine contribution science has to make to push back against that? They are explicitly doing it in your name. Seriously, it's a question of integrity. By the way, if you are a young person anxious about climate change who you found your way here because of a topic, I did another video talking more about why some of the extreme doomist messaging aimed at you is wrong and what motivates those who are doing the messaging. You might want to watch that video next.